If you watched the unboxing for this kit, you know I kind of forgot it existed. I was hyped for it when it came out, but I just didn't remember. I think part of that, and I'll talk about this more in the review, is the Zaku Warrior line just kind of blurred for me. This came out initially as the regular release, but the only one. All the rest of them are P-Bandai, and like a lot of us, P-Bandai just kind of goes under my radar most of the time. So that brought me to the idea of, well, is the Zaku Warrior good? And then is this version of it good? And on that thought, I welcome you to this review of 2019's Master Grade Zaku Warrior Lunamaria Hot Custom here on the Gunpla Network. This video is brought to you by none other than Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Playmo and Gumpla here in North America. So when you're placing your next order with Canadian Gundam, don't forget to use the promo code Gumpla Network to save yourself 10% off. So I have to say this is a kit that I was pretty excited about. I wasn't really sure what to expect going in. Like I had some kind of preconceptions, but Generally, this was one that I was excited about, and then it flew under my radar for the longest because I just kind of forgot about it. And then when the chance to review it came up, I got really excited again. And it's not necessarily because the Luna Mario Hawk aspect of it, but the Zaku Warrior, I think, is one of the better designs from the Gundam Seed Mythos. And yeah, it's a redesign from the UC, whatever, but I think they did a good job of making it their own, and it looks good. So when the Master Grade came out, I was like, oh, that's pretty sick. And of course, a bunch of P Bandai variants came out as well. So I wanted to look at this from two different perspectives. One, is just the Zaku Warrior good as a Master Grade? And then two, is the Lunamaria Hawk version of it good? Does it add anything? Does it attract anything? And kind of go from there. So... As far as the just Zaku warrior of it all goes, the frame is pretty stable and solid. This has been used in all of the other Zaku warriors, as well as I believe the Jin reuses most of these parts, I think. So you have a really solid frame to start with. The armor layering's pretty good, nothing too crazy by any means, but it's pretty traditional Master Grave from what you expect. So you get a sturdy frame, and you get armor that goes over pretty well. And you get a visually quite interesting look. Like I said, this was a really solid design from Sea Destiny. I think this and the Goof are probably my two favorites, kind of overall. And yeah, this... I'm really surprised we didn't see more regular releases of this. Like, I don't know why we didn't just get the basic green version as the regular release. And this would have been P-Bandai along with all the other pilot specific color variants but yeah i mean if they make a goof off of this frame sign me up <laughs> they make a dom on this frame they make any of the other seed grunts on this frame i'm a hundred percent there because it is a really nice sturdy frame the feet move pretty well the arms move well like it's a very basic silhouette but it works nothing feels out of place nothing feels too tight nothing feels too loose it is exactly what you'd expect. Now, when you add the Luna Maria Hawk version onto it, because uh, visually speaking, I just like I said, the design's good, but what about the Luna Maria Hawkness of it? What about the red? I don't dislike it, but it is hard to film and photograph. Uh, the red, the kind of bright red, is really e easy to oversaturate, and the dull red just kind of is dull most of the time, unfortunately. And then the white, of course, at that point is blown out. But I don't think the color scheme is bad. The backpack, yeah, it's okay. I think it's fine, visually speaking. And the big gun is pretty impressive visually without thinking about it too much. So from a design perspective, the visual aspect in both the Zaku Warrior and the Lunamaria Hawk version are executed well. But are they executed from an engineering imposability standpoint to the same degree? Well, kind of. So in your base form, you have a beam rifle which has multiple clips, two of which are in the shield, which I was really worried about the shield being way too heavy because it's pretty thick and it's multiple types of plastic layered in. 
but it actually works quite well. It's on this like three point hinge system or three point like ball joint type situation. It, it's very stable and it doesn't weigh the arm or the shoulder down. It's very impressive. But you get the two um, ammo packs, if you will, that go in there. Then you have the beam rifle, which is serviceable. It's very similar from a, like a frame perspective to that of the um, Freedom 2.0 and so on. It's fine. I, I don't think there's really much to write home about here. I don't think it's as visually striking as like the actual original Zaku machine gun, but it does carry a lot of that over. So it it is serviceable, and if you pose it with this, it looks fine. It doesn't look out of place. You also get the ability to put it on a stand in this mode, and you could do it with the other one as well. But if you do decide to, say, put it up in the air with its heat axe, or its beam axe in this instance, it's going to look good. You have the pose ability, the maneuverability to move things where you want them, to move the legs out of the way, to move the skirt armor, to bend and twist the torso, to move the other arm and the shield out of the way. It works fine. I would say the one limitation, and this is more of the Zaku Warrior as a whole, is there's a big collar that goes around the head, and it does limit articulation to a certain point. Um, now, the way they try to work around to this is you can take the top of the helmet off and adjust where the eye is looking, but that's not the easiest thing to do, and I think I've seen it done better in other implementations of mono-eyed suits. So, I mean, it's cool and it's nice to be able to move the eye, but I don't think that that should be done in concession of not being able to move the head. So pretty much all your Zaku warriors are gonna have a very similar situation, and I'm not sure if the Jin does. I wouldn't imagine so since it doesn't have the same color design, but maybe it does, who knows? We haven't gotten there yet, but maybe one day. So. In terms of just articulation for the Zaku Warriors, yeah, solid. Shields move out of the way easy. All of the limbs and whatnot move out of the way easy. The head's really the only major kind of pain point. Now, if you do decide to put it on the ground, like I said, your feet do move around quite a bit, so you can go ahead and have it in some pretty stable poses. The feet are big enough as well that if you just have one foot on its tiptoe, it's more than reasonable to expect to stand up without being too wobbly. So if you do want to pop the shield out of its second ball joint and kind of bring it forward, you can absolutely do that on the ground as like a defensive pose and then have the beam rifle or the beam axe with it as well. And once again, had we got the green version of this instead, I think that's a very good pose to go along with it, whereas Luna Mario Hawks typically like a bigger artillery piece. so. It's a little weird to see this, but, you know, maybe she gets in close quarters combat sometimes. Now, once you get the big wizard pack, the gunner wizard pack on, it's fine. It's serviceable, it moves around, and it looks okay. I will say that this is my least favorite part of this kit, unfortunately. I really honestly wish that they would have like i know it would have been bandai selling us more individual things but just do the basic green zaku as a regular release do all the wizard packs and then just have the individual color variations as p bandai that's still fine but i just like this i think is fine there are other wizard packs i think that we'd be better and not just because of like my, my personal preference from a design standpoint but there are two big issues I have with the gunner pack in particular. And they're both an execution problem. So the first part of it is it's not proportioned right. Now, I don't think it's off too far, but it is off enough that you can't super easily have the beam rifle on the back skirt at the same time. And if you do, it does look a little wonky because you basically have part of the backpack resting on it which there's not a lot of weight there. It just doesn't look like it's supposed to be that way. That aside, it is also not the worst mechanism to bring the gun forward, but it's not good either. So you have this somewhat slightly oversized, slightly over-exaggerated backpack that is 
going to be one side heavy, obviously, because the big gun and the big gun doesn't really fold and move out of the way super easily. Now, yeah, I know it's a big gun. It's not going to just fold up and disappear. But having messed with things like the Buster, which I also hated the, the combination gimmick of its guns and like some of the bigger accessories from like the full mechanic stuff or like even to an extent the new Gundam with its bazooka you can do big things like big weaponry without it being kind of a pain to mess with like I have the wizard pack on the backpack right now on my shelf but it's holding the beam rifle so the whole aspect of making this the Luna Mario Hawk version just does nothing for me right like I love the base of this I think that I really wish we would have seen more regular Saku Warriors, to be honest, and maybe one day we get a goof ignited, fingers crossed. But you know, just doing the Luna Mario Hawk version as the regular release is strange to me, and I don't exactly get it. Now, if you, I know it's probably the most prominent one we see throughout the show, so I kind of get that, but that's never really stopped Bandai before. Now, if you like the big gun, great if you liked the buster gundam and you like the bigger kind of heavy artillery piece gundams awesome this is gonna be right up your alley you're gonna love this if you don't like big unwieldy accessories and you don't want to take the time to maneuver them around the arm and make sure the wire's not popping out and getting the hands in place as you see your <laughs> hands not all the way on that the handle then you're probably not going to like this specific portion, but the good news is you still have the beam rifle and the heat axe, so if you want just a regular Zaku Warrior, there you go. So, the Zaku Warrior, Chef's Kiss, great. I recommend it to anyone that wants a solid Master Grade. If you don't obviously like Seed, then don't get it, but everyone else that's open to Seed, open to the Zaku Warrior, it's solid. Anyone that, of course, doesn't like Seed and doesn't like the big unwieldy gun or backpack situation, you could probably still get away with this, and I think it would be fine, and especially with this being the regular release versus the P Bandai ones that are ungodly expensive at this point, probably. It's still worth getting. Like, the base version of this is still good. Just don't use the backpack like I did. Like, it's on there just for aesthetics, but... Don't use the gun. Just have it folded up on the back and use the beam rifle. Because it's still a really cool striking silhouette. So, yeah. That's what kind of it. If you just don't like Seed, that's kind of the one thing I wouldn't recommend this to you for. But everyone else, I think this is a really solid choice and you can't go wrong with it. But those are just my two cents. If you've built this, let me know in the comments down below what you what did you think. Is the gun big and unwieldy, or am I just kind of being a, a little baby about this? Or, you know, is the Zaku frame not what you expected? Let me know. I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say on it. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. I really do appreciate it, guys. And as always, do your best to stay safe and keep on building.